Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Apoor Tiwari. I am one of the study medic mentors associated with MRCP preparation for more than two years. So welcome to our YouTube series and we will be discussing about short topic antibiotic resistance mechanisms for our part one MRCP aspirants. So let's quickly not waste time and just to give you some overview about what is antibiotic resistance usually normally what happens is whenever there is a bug or bacteria or virus let's talk about bacteria because we are talking about antibiotic not antivirals so we apply antibiotic to them or give antibiotic to them and they die whereas if there is some kind of mutation either in their channels or in their genetics or in their plasmid or in their genome they become mutant and they survive and they continue to reproduce and produce offspring which are further resistant to antibiotics. Before going further, we should know something about the mechanism by which uh, certain antibiotics work. So this slide is pretty much will give you one question in every part one diet uh, in a year pertaining to antibiotic uh, mechanisms. So usually d which is historical, vancomycin, bacitracin, penicillin, cephalosporins, cephamycin, they inhibit cell wall synthesis, whereas beta-lactamases uh, inhibit cell wall integrity, which uh, to give some examples will be amoxiclav, uh, which is amoxicillin clavulinate, or any bactam, you can say sulfur methoxazole, bactam combination, piperacillin cell bactam combination, every bactam, piperacillin is a bactam, or imipenance tested and they all are the one who will be inhibiting the cell wall integrity. Then comes DNA synthesis inhibitor which are metronidazole, then DNA gyrase inhibitor which is quinolones like fluoroquinolone, moxifloxacin, levofloxacin, RNA polymerase inhibitors like rifampicin or rifampin. Then comes ribosomal inhibitors in which the translation process of is inhibited. In turn, protein synthesis is inhibited, but there is 50S inhibitor, the erythromycin, chloramphenicol, thanamycin, 30S inhibitors are tetracycline, streptomycin, or canamycin, then comes cytoplasmic membrane inhibitors like phospholipid membranes, which are basically polymyxin. Antibiotic resistance can be intrinsic, which is inherited to the progeny or acquired, which could be by genetic methods, either, either chromosomal mutations or extra chromosomal mutations. If extra chromosomal, this is via plasmid, which is from one bacteriophage to another bacteriophage agency from one plasmid to another. Intrinsic resistance is usually natural and it lacks target. There's no cell wall in it inherently resistant to penicillin like Penicillin acts on the cell wall. What if the bacteria doesn't have a cell wall? They will be inherently resistant to penicillin Then comes efflux pumps. The drugs are blocked from entering the cell or their export of the uh, cell wall uh, out of the bacteria is increased So internal concentration is not adequately achieved and these kind of resistance are seen usually in E. coli or Cerebonacerogenosis, so usually the urinary tract infection organisms, preferably called as coliforms, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, E. coli, Proteus mirabilis, Uroplasma urolyticum, they all show this kind of resistance mechanism. Drug is inactivated by certain enzymes like cephalosporinase and Klebsiella. Acquired resistance are usually the genetic mutations. It refers to the change in DNA structure of the gene. It occurs at a frequency of 1 per 10 million cells. For example, this is usually seen in Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the famous one, whether it is for isonizide or rifampicin in XTRTV or MDRTVs. Then comes often mutants have uh, reduced susceptibility. Plasmids. Plasmids are usually extra chromosomal genetic elements that can replicate independently and freely in the cytoplasm. Plasmids carry resistant genes which are called R genes and they are called R plasmids. These R genes can be readily transferred from one R plasmid to another plasmid or to chromosome. Much of the drug resistance encountered in clinical practice is plasmid mediated. Mechanism of resistance gene transfer. Transfer of R genes from one bacterium, the conjugation or transcription or transformation is there. Transfer of resistance gene between plasmids within the bacterium is by transposons or by integrons. Transfer of R genes from one bacterium to another is usually by conjugation which is the main mechanism is spread of resistance. The conjugate plasmids make a connecting tube between the two bacteria through which plasmid itself can pass or transduction. So if we talk about conjugation, we usually talk about 
consecutive plasmids which make a connecting tube like these are two plasmids and they make a connecting tube and through which uh, plasmid is here so this gets transmitted to here now it's transduction in which the plasmid DNA includes in the bacterial phage which this is a bacterium this is a bacterium and this is a bacteriophage so the plasmid DNA is enclosed actually in this and this bacteriophage is coming from this species and going to this species this is transduction transformation is the least of a clinical problem in which free DNA is picked up by the environment like this is the free DNA meaning this is the bacteria this bacteria engulfs this DNA so this is transformation this is conjugation transduction and this is conjugation so mechanism of resistance change also with transposons you can say a transposons are sequences of DNA that can move around different positions within the genome of single cell so you can say transposons they can move around within the cell so donor plasmid containing the transposons co-integrate with acceptor plasmids they can replicate during co-integration both plasmids then separate and each contains the R gene carrying the transposon. Modification of protection of the target site is another way of resistance. So, like tetracycline macrolides, uh, clindamycin, they are targeting ribosome. What if those ribosomes are altered and as a result they don't have the uh, docking unit where again these antibiotics can go and dock. What about, for example, you want to go to New York and the flight is not able to land because the runway is not clear. So that kind of a resistance actually is ribosomal permutation. Whereas alter DNA gyrase is fluoroquinolone. The target site on the enzyme DNA gyrase is altered. Modified penicillin binding proteins for strep pneumonia. And as a result, they are resistant to penicillin. Mutation in the DNA dependent RNA polymers again an enzyme. Enzymes are big units in which there are docking centers where these antibiotics go and dock and inhibit the enzyme. What if those enzyme sites are actually altered? Permeability is seduced. New porin channels in the bacterial cell world do not allow antibiotics to enter the cell. So these are antibiotics, these are porin cells. And what if they don't allow? They are not like this. They become like this and more flattened and they don't allow. Reflux pumps, as I already told you, some gram negative bacteria usually they inhibit the plasma mediated synthesis of porin channels, which obstructs the influx of hydrophilic penicillin like ampicillin. By producing enzymes that inactivates antibiotics, an activation of beta lactam antibiotics like Stafford is necessary gonorrhea, hemophilus influenza to produce beta lactamase, which cleaves beta lactam ring. Inactivation of chlorophenicol by acetyl transferase, gram negative bacteria usually, these enzymes present considerably enhanced high acid resistance is seen there. So, usually that's why we don't give chlorophenicol for any gram negative infection, and it is usually reserved for gram positive because this enzyme inherently is present and as a result there is a higher resistance in GNPs compared to gram positive bacteria. Inactivation of aminoglycoside usually inactivated by acetyl phosphoretinyl transferase enzymes and these are usually present in both gram positives and gram negatives. Use of alternative pathways for metabolism or growth requirements. What if uh, some antibiotics will try to inhibit the metabolism, cell wall synthesis, cell protein synthesis, what if they, these bacteria, these bugs acquire alternative pathways for metabolic or growth requirements. So, sulfur amide resistance popularly by overproducing PABA in the bacteria is one of the examples, one of the famous examples that, that can be asked here in MRCP part 1. No one will ask you the full form of PABA, so don't worry about that. Penicillin and cephalosporin usually mechanism resistance beta lactamase cleavage of the lactam ring. Whereas amino glycoside is modification of the phosphorylate and dilating on acetylating enzymes, chlorophenicol is modification by acetylation, erythromycin is receptor change by methylation of the ribosomal RNA, tetracycline is by reduced uptake or increased export, sulfonamides is active export out of the cell and reduced affinity of enzymes. Quinolones, cephalofloxacin, usually associated with tendinopathy, we very well know that. Mechanical resistance is DNA gyrus mutation, efflux pump that will reduce intracellular quinolone concentration, macrolide. Usually, the post transcription methylation of 23S bacterial ribosomal RNA occurs, and that's causes resistance. Vancomycin usually it is a DLR allow mutates to DLR the lack, confirming resistance. 
as we already know the bacteria that vancomycin usually has uh, in which the cell wall cell wall is a complex phospholipid structure which is made up of cell wall is a complex phospholipid structure it's a bilayer phospholipid structure which is made up of a lot of amino acids so in those amino acids the alanine alanine amino acid is the one where this mycin acts if that alanine alanine dl or dl we call it like that so if that dl are kind of amino acid mesh uh, i can show you like this so this is one molecule which is called dl So these molecules are linked like this, linked like this. What if these molecules gets modified into something like triangular molecules? This is D, DLA, and linked to this DLA and LAC, like some other molecule. And uh, so vancomycin can act here. But since the molecule is changed, vancomycin cannot act. Even if it acts, it won't be able to attach to it. And as a result of this, it won't be able to kill the bacteria. That's why this kind of resistance is called vancomycin resistance. Usually they will ask you, what do you, what are the bacteria which are actually vancomycin resistant? They are Enterococcus fecalis and Efficium. And how to kill those bacteria? So the drug of choice for them is usually, usually we answer is linozolid. But you should know other options as well. Daptomycin, dalfopristin, cunipristin are the other options that they might ask you or expect you to know. You should also know that what antibiotics are active against MRSA, which is vancomycin, ticoplanin. Apart from that, you should also know that antibiotics like doxycycline, amoxicillin, clavulinate can also act on certain strains of methicillin sensitive staph aureus. Most of the antibiotic resistance I already explained to you and i don't think they will be asking you any more further questions pertaining to antibiotic resistance when it comes to mrcp part one remember we are talking about antibiotic resistance antimicrobial resistance we're not talking about antifungal resistance right now i hope this uh, small module will give you some help in clear your thought process when you will be preparing for your mrcp part one